I am a dwarf. My honor is my life, and without it I am nothing. I shall become a slayer. I shall seek redemption in the eyes of my ancestors. I shall become as death to my enemies, until I face he that takes my life and my shame. By Grimnir's beard. Hello and welcome on this War Master 10mm Dwarven Slayer How to Paint Tutorial in which I want to show you how to paint this damn freaking tiny booger. On this regard, two disclaimers. First one, I'm not an English native speaking person, so I hope you may forgive some mispronunciation and stuff like this. And the second thing to say is the focus in the video it's damn damn freaking hard to keep the miniature in focus all the time and i hope you may forgive if the image is blurry here and there let us start with the miniature you can see on this image right here i planted the figurine on a little painting handle with some super glue and as you can see here it's spray painted with black followed by a heavy dusting of Corax white spray by Citadel. The miniature is glued near to the edge of the painting handle so I can reach all the areas I want to paint. First off we will focus on the skin tones. We use Bugman's Glow by Citadel for this skin tone cause I think Bugman is a dwarven brewery and um, what better color tone to take this one for a dwarf. Throughout the whole tutorial it is your choice where to leave the color scheme or the paint scheme uh, when you're happy with it. I tried to take my best to give many many edge highlights here and there and to maybe overdo it a bit on this paint job. Bookman's Glow in this case is uh, diluted with a bit of water and I apply it on all the skin surfaces, arms, hands, the back and the head. Next up, the beard and the mohawk need some color and I take Yoka Arrow Orange for this one. Yes, a more yellowy orangey color tone cause I think on a much larger scale it's better to give the slayers a red orange color tone on beard and mohawk but on this small scale it looks a bit awkward so I go with a bit more of a dissaturated color or less saturated color which tends to be more of this yellowy orange as you see here. As always a bit diluted and I pick all out, uh, out all the areas, the beard, these small beard sections under the accessories in the beard and the mohawk. If you spill over some paint, don't worry too much. You can fix it later, cause we will revisit the skin tone with several layers in the near future. After Bookman's Glow and Yoka Era Orange has dried up, I apply a thin coat of Reikland Flesh Shade. Beware that the color doesn't pool too much on the surfaces and leave it a bit to dry and we can move further with the other color areas. In this occasion it is the base color tone and all the leather parts with a little bit nut brown, 
is it hazelnut, I think. So it's a dryad bark by Citadel. Of course, I want a muddy brown base with flock in the later parts of my war master real tiny miniature career and uh, i think this fits well there is the belt and he got this shoulder piece and i think in the back of the shoulder piece there is a little leather strap to keep it together so i pick this one out too the skirt is painted with a uh, nice green tone an olive green tone castellan green cause uh, maybe you've seen this in the image up front there are several colors of trousers for my slayers bluish reddish brown and green and i think this one would take a green skirt for his himself there are many bracelets accessories on the beard these shoulder piece and some decorative elements on the X heads that I will pick out with Balthazar gold to paint it in a more brassy tone later. And this one would be our nice base color. To spoil you a little bit, this Balthazar gold will be oxidated. Uh, is it the right word? I don't know. Will get a uh, nihilac oxide coat to get a complementary contrast thingy between beard and the golden parts to give the viewer a little bit more to focus their eyes on to to get their attention the next step is iron warrior a dark metal tone for all the metal parts that are still unpainted the x and head the handle and everything else you could if you want uh, add some wooden pieces on the axis but I think a slayer would wield full metal axis and as I said it it would be a nice nice title for an dwarven war epic full metal axis if you like this, just comment down below in the comment section. Hashtag full metal axis. To give the silvery metal tones a first highlight, I apply Lead Belcher on the upper parts of the X heads and the outer parts and on the handle and these little metally played skirt pieces that are underneath the beard. The most important part for such small miniatures is to keep your brush focused and don't overspill too much. After the metal color has dried we go further in the near future with some pigments but before this I will take some Athonian Camo shade on the skirt to darken it down a bit cause I don't get any darker green tone handy and uh, I want to leave it a bit darker. All the golden parts will be painted with a Nihilac Oxide now as I spoiled you before to give it a bit of a complementary contrast between beard and the gold pieces cause I think the gold parts, even if they are more of a brass color later, are too much in the color var variation or the color spectrum of the beard, so I want to break it up with some of these greenish, bluish parts. I apply some pigment powder on all the silver metal pieces. This one are pigments from uh, Tabletop Basement in Hannover, Germany, but you can uh, get the, your pigments of several companies, AK Interactive, Vallejo or whatever you may like. The pigments are diluted with water, very, very thin, like uh, nearly like a shade, and I apply them on all these silver parts. First step for this trick 
is if give the impression of a light rusted surface and second thing is that this pigment paste would settle down in the recesses and give them a bit more definition. After everything has dried you can leave it like that and say yes this is my dwarf and he will dig a hole but you can go further and apply some highlights. The first thing to do here is another coat of Bugman's Glow on all these muscle areas on the flashy bits. I focus on the muscles to give the definition to them and um, here and there is some overspill of gold and nilac oxide and on the hands are some pigments that spilled over so I repair those areas. On the face I will focus on the cheekbones, the nose, the forehead and the head sides with the ears and will stay away from the neck mostly so that I can fix up this overspill on the head's side and give the neck more of a dark area where the mohawk maybe leave some shadows. The flash then is followed by Cadian flash tone, even more definition on the muscle structure. As you can see here, a little bit blurry, but I, I uh, say it would be better on the other arm, better to see on the video. Some more definition on the hands, pick out maybe some of the individual fingers some more definition on the forehead where you leave the centerpiece between the eyebrows dark. The nose, the cheekbones and the ears are very important for this sculpt because I, as I remember, never seen the dwarven sculpt with pointy ears. This is the special, special thing on this Chromatry Forge miniature and uh, I like it, I must say. If you're a decent uh, painter and uh, got no psychological issues, as I sometimes got them uh, with a kind of, yes, I can go further, you can leave the color tone at this step and it would look fine from a playing distance. There is nothing wrong with it. But if you want to like uh, be some uh, crazy maniac as I am, you can apply another coat of highlights and in this case Kislev flash with an edge highlight on the muscles to give it the most definition as you can get on this scale. And as I said before, some steps you would take on bigger miniatures won't apply on those small ones cause on bigger miniatures you can get another coat or another highlight on the knuckles and on the cheekbones and the nose with the palette witch flesh. I would rather say don't do it on this scale. It would look really, really awkward. And with this step, the coloration of the skin is finished. And on the next steps that you paint, just be aware, keep in mind that you don't spill over so you don't have to fix anything that you have painted and highlighted before. As we've done with the base coating, the next step is ride beard and mohawk and I take out Yoka Arrow Orange again. But wait! Yes, I'm a freaking moron. I painted in some bright gray areas in the eyes. Administratum gray so that he will breathe out life. Yes, it's it's a tiny detail that you don't need, but I thought, hey, it would be funny. Back to the beard again. Yes, Yoka Arrow Orange to get some more definition on the eyebrows, the beard and all the other hair parts. Just leave 
some of the shaded Yoka Arrow orange shine through. And take your time to take out all of these details. You can uh, variation, get a variation between some of maybe dry brushing techniques with this uh, brush or stipple down on the areas where you need the paint. Just keep a steady hand and take your time for all these details that need to be painted. The mohawk is a special thing cause you wanna get a color gradient and some transition from the parts where the hair leaves the, the head and the upper parts of the mohawk. So I take the brush and start pulling to the top of the mohawk from about two third or a half length of the mohawk. And if you say this is not the technique that you want to apply there, you also can uh, apply dry brushing as a valid painting method. Cause even if the miniature is really, really small, the details are sculpted sharp enough to get good results with dry brushing. On the next step I take a yellowy ochre tone La Tau Light Ochre. Yes, this beard, Slayer's beard, doesn't go in the color range of a orange red as said before, but on the, uh, this scale I think it would look better if we go a bit more in a yellowy tone. Otherwise it looks a bit awkward. The first Slayer models I tried, I applied uh, ta not Tau Light Ochre. I work something around Yoka Arrow Orange. Then I apply Raglan Flash Shade and go on with a Troll Slayer Orange like some painting guides of Games Workshop or other tutorials on the internet will suggest, but it doesn't fit the eye right. Tau Light Ochre on the Mohawk, as you can see here, just some brush strokes to give a bit more definition to the hair structure and on the top of the mohawk some some small lines to give the illusion of the hair's structure nothing fancy just basic basic brushwork and with this step the hair and the beard is done. If you want to take it even lighter, you can take Angor Flash to give a bit more definition to the hair, but I think it's fine here. The skirt is painted again with Castellan Green. This Castellan Green is applied more on the lower section of the skirt, leave the recess areas clear, and Death World Forest for a sharp edge highlight on the skirt to define these lines. Nothing fancy, as I said, maybe just the same techniques as you would apply them on the mohawk. After the skirt is done, we can go further to the leather parts and I would fix some overspill with a dried bark. Some green color has left the skirt and go on to the boots and uh, I fix it again. And start with Morn Fang Brown. I don't know if I said it before, but every color I apply is diluted a bit with water and um, paint it on here to give a little bit translucent effect. Here some color variation to define where is the boot and where is the dark brown base on all the leather parts and this one is finished with some scrag brown starting with an edge highlight and working inwards to the surface to the color area to give some tension to the viewer's eye. After that, 
there are the metal areas and we start with the golden brassy ones i take both of the gold out again and work back on these nihilac oxide effects i apply these both of the gold on their this occasions where the light would hit the surface to give the nihilac oxide parts of these metal areas some effect between this is weathered and uh, this green on german it's called green uh, grün span has settled there and a bit more of uh, a shadow effect it's a uh, a double effect I want to apply here, if you can say so. The final highlight on the golden brassy parts is Rune Lord Brass, where the light hits the most. And you can apply this color nearly like dry brushing to hit only the upper areas on the shoulders and on all these tiny ornaments and accessories. The final piece that you need paint to paint on these miniatures are the silvery, in this case, rusted silvery metal parts. And for this occasion, I take a rune fang steel, a bright silver color, and paint edge highlights on all the raised areas and on the areas where maybe these slightly rusted metal pieces would scrape against something. Um, this you can see on the axe blade where the rust is rubbed off. This is a fact I use on uh, nearly all my miniatures. This is the, my favorite metal effect. I use it on 28 millimeters, on 10 millimeters. I would even use it on uh, six millimeter miniatures cause I like it so much. It defines the dark rusted metal with some worn weathered effect so uh, that this slayer looks like he tried to fulfill his oath a long, long time. Since a long, long time, I would say. And that's it. This is your ready for battle slayer. The only thing you may want to do is uh, put him down onto a base. In my occasion, I use a 10 by 10 millimeter square base with a drilled hole for a little magnet and put down some sand, paint it all with dried bark. And uh, in a later time, I would apply some green flock to give it a bit of a has color variation on the base that it doesn't do uh, need to look so bleak. If you like what you see here, just say me, say to me in the comments. And if you want to see more tutorials on 10 millimeter scale, just put it down below in the comment section. There are many miniatures from excellentminiatures.com that I can paint for you. There are these Chromatry Forge Dwarves, there are the Forest Dragon Wood Elves and Vampire Count Proxies. There are some special High Elves, Dark Elves, Bretonians and uh, the Tomb Kings of Camry. So if you want to see these miniatures, just leave a comment down below and comment which miniature you want to like me to paint. Like request point Blood Knights Vampire Counts. Or you say something like request point High Elf Silver Helm Cavalry. And I try to do my best and paint such miniatures. If you liked what you see, leave a comment or leave a thumbs up. This one is another indicator that you liked the video. And uh, I will see you in the next one. I'm off for today. I am Dizzyfinger and uh, keep on wargaming.